Guys, welcome to My Guy Reviews, the podcast. So on our podcast, uh, I am joined by my special guest, Hello. My Guy Monkey. That's me. Uh, welcome, welcome. Who are you? <laughs> my, my, my Guy Brick. As it's the host with the most, right? That's me. Um, so on our podcast, what we do is we talk about a pop cultural topic. Uh, one person comes in and does a bit of research about that topic the other person comes in cold and then we kind of go through it then we go into our segments where we do our quick reviews and then do our previews and then at the end you try and muddle your way through how to contact us <laughs> which has been working so well so far um <coughs> this is the, uh this is an exciting episode because it's episode number 10 so we've hit double digits Ooh, wow it's the most important uh, number uh, until you know triple digits. Well, you know, when you grew up, did you care about being double, double digits? You care about being a teenager. Thirteen's going to be the important one. No, double digits. Because <laughs> okay. then the only other time you get another digit is like ninety years from there. Wow. If you if you live that long, right? Every other Boy. number could be like uh, being a teen is what three years away. Once you're once you're a teen, you'll be eighteen in five years. Twenty one for drink and age in the states in a couple more years after that so all those numbers don't mean nothing i think triple digits double triple yeah so that's uh, we've got 90 weeks more to get to triple then <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there <laughs> i, I can the see goal it ahead. Yes. i know the queen's already wrote out my letter she's just got to post it now it's all fun <laughs> Um, cause it's, cause it's double digit episode. I thought we'll do something mm-hmm. a little bit, which we haven't done before and we'll do yeah. a rewind episode. Okay. So we're going to rewind 10 years. Right. Okay. So 2009. And now uh, this is yeah. quite a stretch for you cause you would have been what double digits, just turning double digits yourself. Your wee little lad. <laughs> um, 2009. 2009. So <clears throat> as it's pop culture related, we're not going to talk about like the Hubble scope been repaired and kind of political <clears throat> things so much but we're going to talk about uh things of 2009 we i always threaten that one day we'll talk about video games so we'll talk about video games in 2009 Excellent. uh we'll talk a bit about the music and then we'll briefly touch on the movies depending on time okay. uh but 2009 cast your mind back three important things happened pop culturally many more may have happened but three of the most important things that happened yes, what do you think true would have happened in 2009 pop culture wise some or amazing very important in 2009 i have okay. no idea what they are but <laughs> <they're>... <laughs> okay so if i give if i give you a hint okay okay so um oh, every, every year hard. obviously celebrities pass away okay 2009 is no exception Most um, people but dying all the time no. all the time yes uh but in Michael 2009 Jackson's not been dead that long is he he passed away in 2009. That's the year. Is it? Oh, wow. Yeah. Ten years already. Blimey. Ten years already, yeah. I can't believe that. So, I, so, I, so recent, that one. Yeah. Um, so 2009 is a big year because obviously MJ passed away. But, of course, um, there, are, 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 it's, it's one of those weird things, right? So you remember where you were for certain events. Mm-hmm. And this is one that – because this is pre the smartphone, before Twitter, before Facebook was – having fake news and everything on there. So yeah. I remember we were at a pre-wedding party <laughs> yeah. and someone came running into the tent marquee and they said, oh, on the TV, on the news tonight, it says Michael Jackson just passed away. Oh. And everyone's like, no, no, that's just, just talking nonsense. So we all came out the marquee and you go around this TV to get news, you know, like, mm. normal, like we did back in the day. But now, obviously, news is at your fingertips. So, yeah. so that's how I always remember MJ's these days, passing. these days, I'm just sitting in the living room, and it's either on the telly or my mum says it, says it off the news. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know that now. <laughs> well, it's exactly. Not an event. Wow. So yeah. Well, what, how did you feel at that moment when you've been? I think when, it's more of a shock because you're not even thinking like that. Are you? You're not in. No, you just. You're, a you're party. not. We're at a wedding party, right? Pre-wedding party, and you're just like celebrating the day. Anyway, so I always always say to my cousin it's because of her he passed away <laughs> so <laughs> i will live with her forever <laughs> um another big thing happened in 2009 yeah 
Okay, so um, a, um, you know, like w prime minister, right? Okay, do you want to take a guess? What, prime minister died. No. <laughs> we got a new prime minister. No. Oh. Um, I Something don't know that would be that that uh, culturally was significant in two thousand nine to do with prime minister. So, prime minister. I just remember Tony Blair around. Well, the reason why I said Prime Minister is to throw you off. I really meant President. Oh, <laughs> that's entirely different. So is, is this, um, <clears throat> is it, oh, my, uh, Obama? Yeah, Barack. So Barack came into power in 2009. It's that's been 10 years as well. Obama. So it's a huge, huge, I mean, culturally, uh, for the States, obviously, first black president, Barack yeah. Obama. Yeah, so that's, so 2009, not only MJ yeah. passing. Barack was president. That was like the beginning of the future. And then Trump came along. That's right. And, and, and that. we're, we're, po we're, we're in Brexit mode right now as well. So, you know, yeah. we're all doing well. Um, mm -hmm. And the third thing that I could find, and I think this is so significant that I put it on the list, is, is to do with films. Okay. okay. So 2009, a huge cultural shift and change happened for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, and it's to do with a film called Princess and the Frog. Um, was that out in 2009? Yes, it was. Yeah, it came out just like Thanksgiving, kind of november -y time in the US. Mm, okay. First black princess, Disney princess? That's right, yeah. That's the first ever black princess. It's only been 10 years since the first black princess. Well, same year as Obama. Yeah, Disney. exactly. So Barack got into power. It's like, the, it's like Disney sold out, as usual. It's like, well, based, oh, bet, now, now, now we'll be now, racially now, diverse. Now yeah. the president is back. Yeah, now we can just, um, uh, because I guess, the, you know, you know why on pieces of on art and mm -hmm. in cartoon might be cheap to do, but yeah. to put colour on a character <laughs> maybe cost them so expensive. And now That's finally why, why Disney had enough money so for that. Because they were blue. <laughs> Otherwise, it would have been, they should just do it all white. It would have been like cost a tenner. Yeah, exactly. So you know, it's just. But yeah, so that's just ten years ago. We had our first non-white Disney princess. Oh, wasn't that impressed with the movie? That's the so movie cool. was great. Okay. How dare you? Know. How dare you? The biggest Disney movie ever. <laughs> it's not the biggest. It's just culturally significant. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So 2009, we're talking. So we're talking video games, 2009. We always threaten to talk about video games. We haven't yeah. done it so far. Um, and also, a lot of our um, episodes tend to be around um, white characters. Spider-Man, okay. Superman, Quentin Tarantino, John Favreau, the yeah. James Wan franchise, okay. uh, Conjuring. <laughs> so this time, we've, we've diversified it already. We're talking about people of color to start off with. And cool. Now we can talk video games. So okay. 2009, cast your okay. mind back. <clears throat> All right. I've come, up with, I've come up with a rating system. So I'm going to talk to you about a game. You describe the game. And then okay. I want you to, even if you've not played it, you have to give it two distinguished ratings. Now, you're a Sony fanboy. Yeah. So if you, if you like the game or you play the game or you love it, buy it, whatever, you, yeah. say, you say PlayStation. PlayStation. If, if, if you don't like Sony. it and you hate the game, yeah. Then you have to say Xbox, Xbox. because you're a fanboy, right? So... I don't hate Xbox, so <laughs> yes. I just ever since I had a PlayStation One, <laughs> I've just stuck with it. Yeah, I just so love that it. first console so much. <laughs> so, yeah, but I do hate I do hate the controllers for the Xbox, so, so, so yeah, uh, good, that's good. Good, good plan. So what what I'll do is I'll go through, I'll run through the top ten selling games, but then there's some honourable mentions as well because. 2009 had some big games that turned into huge franchises later on as well. Awesome. So we'll talk about them briefly. So That's in 2009, cast your mind back. If you were I've to not... think of a game that could hit the top 10. <laughs> Call of Duty. Call of Duty, yes. It's always up there. It's, it's always the biggest selling game of wasn't the that, year, right? Wasn't that one of the early, earlier times of Call of Duty, though? It was, yeah. So what game was it? <laughs> well, if you were to take a guess, 2009, some people say this is the best Call of Duty of all time. Modern Warfare? That's right, Modern Warfare 2. Yes. That's well, straight Modern in at number two. one. Okay. So the biggest selling game of the year. Uh, I didn't play Call of Duty, so. <laughs> ah, but you, 
<laughs> but you need to put it into its bucket. But I, I got it on the nail. Yeah. yeah. The um, I think this is the one where you online became such a big thing for this because yeah. you could customize the the guns, you could customize the kill streaks, all sorts of stuff that that they were mm. kind of threatening to do, but they really kind of did it in this one and they did it so well. And mm. this then kind of like all, all the other franchises kind of like lived off this one. I think. Yeah. And it was modern warfare as well. So it wasn't mm. the old Call of Duty games where it was set back in kind of like wartime. This is kind okay. of like a That's huge, a huge game, right? Um, yeah. You've, you've said you'd never played it, <laughs> but you now, <laughs> you now need to give it our coveted rating. And you've only got two options. Uh, Xbox. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's that's a, that's, a, that's a big I'm not, call. That I, I'm is. not a Call of Duty fan. I like I, <laughs> I like the Battlefield games. I think you we played it together at one point as well for a short time with with my, with a uh, my guy. That's right. We played um, Bad Company. Yeah, Bad Company Two, Battlefield. Um, that's right. Call, call of Duty. I like the 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 Black Ops the Black Ops games because they have the zombies mode. But Modern Warfare, they don't have that so much, so... Yeah. Maybe it's just Not you like the word black in the title of your game. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> that's all it is. <laughs> that's what it could be. Yeah. Now, uh, a lot of these games, I don't know if you ever played, because they're on a console which you may not have ever owned. Okay. So, so thinking about 2009, you've got the, you've got the biggest selling game of the year down. Yeah. Call of Duty. What do you think were the next biggest selling games or well, any games you can remember? There, so there's got to be maybe a Mario or a Zelda there. There is a Mario. There we go. New Super Mario Bros. Oh, yes. Yeah. I played on that. On the Nintendo Wii. Uh, I think I played it on... Did I play it on Wii or DS? Is it on DS as well? <clears throat> yes, it was. Yeah, it was on DS as well. Yeah, I found it really hard. Hard to get into. Um, yeah, so... Xbox. <laughs> oh, I, think, I could not um, get into it. I could not play this, it. This is the one where you could jump worlds and it had stars in different places. This this one was huge, like in terms mm. of um, scope, I think I was going to say. Not, not huge in terms of sales. But it. I always think Mario, what they've done is they've taken the basic concept and they really they really push it to the next level. Like even right now, yeah. you've got, the, you got the, two, the maker, the 3D maker thing. But each time yeah. there's a new Mario game out, I th- I think they are really really good solid games. They're not. Yeah. There's not been terrible entries in the franchise. I think it's they're true. they're generally great. But you've shitted they're, on this well, one. Well, they always try to do something different, which is good. <laughs> and they always yes. focus on a new aspect of gameplay, which is really great. Um, but it's unlike Call of Duty, which is which is kind <laughs> just... of the same every time. So you know, Mario is good yeah. for that. I, mean, well, I, could not, I could not play this game. It was too hard for me. <laughs> up, okay. So you've, you've shitted all over Mario, even I though like it... the early ones. Okay. They're so now that it. now that I've said Nintendo Wii, there's a whole heap of games oh, no. uh, that were included in the top kind of top ten, yeah. all Wii related games. Okay. Which you Rabbit. again may or may not have played. So what's your next guess? The rabbit rabbits. Is that on there? No. No. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Wii. Oh, gosh. Wii specific games. I don't know. Wii Sports? Wii Sports is is there, but it's not kind of like in the top 10. Okay. Um, what else is there? Wii Fit? Yes, Wii Fit. So this is the one where you got the board. Yeah, yeah. And um, there was kind of like games off of that that um, yeah, kind of helped people well. to lose lose weight. You could kind of put your weight in there, your age, your gender, yeah, and then any. And it, and it tells you how much kind of where you need to be in terms of BMI and stuff. Um, yeah. And it was the first video game thing that ever had that sort of information available for people. And because you're playing it yeah. on the, the board, you could genuinely do exercise while playing the game and you wouldn't even think of it that way. Yeah. And I think it's well, such a fun way. For that, but, you know, they yeah. didn't have all the scale, all the fitness. They did tell you, somehow told you how many calories you were burning, which is good on dance mat games. Ah, oh, okay. See, I never played them. But yeah, um, a Wii balance board. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's on there as well. That that's part of the um, the Wii Fit. So yeah, that was a great game. Um, I've used it myself. I probably the opposite side <laughs> to to some people. I was trying to gain weight because I'm always underweight. 
which meant having to do muscle exercises. Um, like pick I, up the board um, <laughs> above your head. <laughs> You're like, whoa. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I can't even remember what they are, but sort of um, endurance running stuff I would do quite a lot on there. Um, I like the thing where you, you could run around a park and you could find secrets and stuff. Like, or you had to like, yeah, you had to find all these different locations while running around a park, just running on the spot on the bounce board. Oh, brilliant! Yeah. And uh, using, I think you used the um, the Wii controller to maybe lean. And also, there's a, a cycling one, which is the same where you could lean the controller left and right to cycle, to to turn while you were cycling on the board. Oh, awesome! Yeah. See, I I never really played it. I was I was, I was aware of it. Well, I knew. I knew what what it did and stuff, but yeah. Yeah. Well, I did have a Wii back in the in the day, but only a few years ago, um, we got a Wii and bounce board just for that. Because so, yeah. when you think about it, it was about eighty pounds for the Wii board. Yeah. When the Nintendo Wii in this country cost about one eighty, and mm. included Wii Sports, so it's it's just under half the cost of the console, but just yeah. the board. But it's still cheaper than <clears throat> like PlayStation and Xbox new, so. Yeah. yeah um but you know i picked it up for a tenner so <laughs> so is this a is this based on the covenant rating <laughs> system where do you put it it's a playstation it's a sony playstation all the way. oh he's put he's put it there yeah. so um so in in that uh so you've got the balance board yeah so that's the Wii fit plus balance board and you've got the balance board so let's say all of them together yeah on that side all together i, I still get that a playstation thumbs up brilliant so then we're still talking Wii because there's a lot of games on here what do you think the next kind of game would be more massive massive game yeah um it's not zelda we've done mario um tetris no always always nintendo um hmm um there's house of the dead no uh ports for the game for the thing um, no, a, dri- a driving Cro- game. No, oh, no. Okay, a driving game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mario Kart. That's right, Mario Kart with the Wii handle. So anyone who yeah. bought the game used to get the little yeah. round accessory, which was just literally a, st- a round piece a of sound, plastic. Piece of plastic, and you could put your controller in the middle, and you feel yeah. like you've got an actual steering wheel. You only yeah. got one in the game, even if you had two controllers, which was yeah. a bit of a shame. But yeah, yeah I, I, I love, I love that game. But yeah, um, don't let me swear you. The, the <laughs> actual control with the steering wheel was rubbish. What? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so, what, what did you think of this? Did you play this? Yes, absolutely. I played, I played this to death. I've, um, first game that when we got a Wii, only maybe five years ago, then got the Wii bounce board, which I already told you about. Um, yeah, this was the game that I just. Play it, plugged my way through. Uh, I used to play it with a, a, a group of people as well, which is great fun. Um, playing because you play split screen on this, which isn't something you can do on every yeah. these days online. But you could play four player split screen. Um, and yes, it's a great franchise. A great yes, game. It is, yeah. Uh, <coughs> Rainbow Road. It's a, always I always like the city city one. Actually, was my favourite. But um, Rainbow Road is really pretty. And I remember, I still remember the, an older version of this game, playing it when I was in school against a girl um, that I was friends with, and I just remember her jumping off the edge of Rainbow Road, cheating all the time. I didn't know what she was doing, but she was she was cheating and winning the races. You know what? So you, fr- you 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 can call her a, a, your friend, but you know her job was there to be the librarian. So I mean, she was there. <laughs> she had to come to work. <laughs> she, she had to put up with you. What? <laughs> it's not really your friend. She, she, she was like a year younger than me, two years younger than me. Actually, been in the library. <laughs> You're thinking of college. <laughs> um, so, friends with the library. So there's, there's quite a lot of maps in this as well. Um, yeah. Again, and and it did the 50 cc, 100 cc, 150 yeah. cc, and the and you had the cool split screen as well, which is yeah. good. And um, the power ups again, as always. There's um, yeah. there's there's one that made everyone small. Yeah. One of the, one of the power ups did, over. and then you yeah. could just cut. Kind of, yeah, you can roll over them all. There's the one where you could turn into bullet, and then the yeah. bullet would drive if you, you through. If you're in last place, you'd get that one. 
I'm not getting that <coughs> yeah. times. And you get the star as well, so you're like almost invincible for a little while. So you can try through anything. The, are the best things you, you can get three shells <coughs> you can directly. You can get one. Is it one homing? Red shell? Yes, yeah, so the re- the red ones are always homing, and then the green ones are the ones that fly in a straight line. Yeah. And then if and you keep the... the green ones on you, if someone knocks into the back yeah, of you, they get hit you. by the, the, the shell. Shells. Yes, that's the that's a yes. good technique. <clears throat> of course, jumping and uh, was it the jump slide thing you could do as well to get extra speed? Yes, yeah. and you could drift in this as well. Yeah, you know how much I, I love drifting. There was another game on there as well, wasn't there? There's a battle mode. I never liked that. Yeah, oh, like the the balloons, balloons bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. I never got. I never liked that. I always just got lost. Because <laughs> of the balloons. <laughs> the balloons. Mm. Um, so, 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 so yeah, <laughs> I, I, th- I think there was a lot in this game, and there's um, a lot going for it. Mm. Um, and again, I think it's especially with the Mario stuff. I think Nintendo know that's their flagship game. Yeah. Um, like Mario Smash Brothers or Super Mario, um, this Zelda, and they really, I think they only release maybe one per console. But each mm. time they do, they take their time and they make a really good complete game and i think well, this is a good one what do you think of mario kart 8 then what, have you played that one no. the one that came after that because no, that, 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 that's one. a bit complicated was that on I wii think. as well no, that was obviously the next console so i guess that was wii u okay no or, or maybe or the next one after the switch it's not on the switch is no, it? it's got to be wii u isn't it yeah but yeah it was just too complicated compared to the, the i think this i think the wii version of mario kart had the most longevity like it was simple but it was playable to the best best yeah. using the steering wheel the best incarnation so far playstation so you... oh, straight that playstation <laughs> so obviously there's different versions of this as well that it's it's available on ds it's available on wii but you know, we're just talking about it in in general and we'll talk hmm. about it in the in the format that you played it so that yeah so that's that's, that's another good game now um the next one on the list, I know for a fact you wouldn't have ever played because okay. you're not an Xbox fan, boy. Um, so this is an Xbox exclusive game. Hello. What do you think it would be? I only know Halo. Halo, that's right. Halo yeah. 3. Yeah. Um, so Master 3. Chief was back. I have played shooting it. Shooting those down. And you have played it. I've played the Halo series, yeah. Oh, my God. It's got, it's got four-player split screen. That's what I've played it with. Oh. Yo, you, <laughs> you know what? Judas, I can't <laughs> believe you left you left PlayStation to play an Xbox exclusive. Well, it's the same as okay. when I had a PlayStation One. So I basically... go round to my friend's house with the N sixty four. Yeah, because everyone else said, "Oh, PlayStation's crap." N sixty four better because you got split screen and four uh, controls. I'm with you. So then you you played a it. version of Halo. Do you remember which version it was or what numbering? Halo uh, five, three, one two, two, one. One or two, oh. I think. Okay, let's just pretend that's the same one as the one that's on my list, Halo yeah, sure. 3. Yeah. Um, what did you think of Halo? Um, I liked it. I, I liked the sword thing you could get, and you could jump and and stab the uh, multiplayer person. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's basically it. I mean, I, my problem with playing Halo, just like uh, GoldenEye as well, is that I never had the control. I never had the console myself, so I never knew the maps as well. Oh, so I would yeah. die a lot. I would die a lot, and I wouldn't be so well practiced with them. So they were they were quite hard for me to play multiplayer. But they were a lot of fun because they were just. I mean, they were the Call of Duty of the day before Call of Duty took over, and then I hate it on them. Hate on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did it have an online mode as well that you remember, or was it just more for know. kind of play at home? Halo, Halo Three might have had at least. I think I. I mean, yeah, Xbox was the first ones to really bring Xbox Live and online play to the table, weren't they? So, I'd say yes. I think they must have had online multiplayer. Is that right? Okay, I'll take yeah. your word for it. I, I I, I'm, I'm a PlayStation fanboy, so I've never played a <laughs> a Xbox exclusive oh, game. Oh wow, really? Well, it's all about life. split screen for me, though. Like, that's that's traditional gaming, isn't it? I mean. Your friends can come around and sit in the same room and play on the same screen. Yeah. So I sort of isolating yourself and playing online. 
Yeah, there was a game that got released in 2009, which we'll talk about later, that does have split screen. And mm. I have played that on the PlayStation. Okay. In split Blur. screen mode. It's what, sorry? Blur. That's my guess. What's your guess? Blur. It's a, it's a, it's a, Blur. Um, nah, yeah, it's a racing not... game. No, That's no, no. It's a, it's a shooting game. It's a shooter. Okay. Um, but it's not that. Um, yeah, and, uh, I, and I know what you mean. I think I played it a few times, a split screen. And because I know where everything is, I can kind mm-hmm. of lead the people into the right direction. And I, and I leave them to shoot a few of the, char- the people, <laughs> the, the villains, but I help out where it needs be. And I just kind of watch to see what they do. You treat them like see. NPC team and just strategy. Yeah, exactly. Just occasionally I'll throw a grenade or occasionally I'll fire a bullet. Yeah, that sort of thing. Yeah. Is this the game you haven't, we haven't talked about yet? We haven't it? got to them yet. So there's, okay. there's some big games that came out in 2009 that aren't on, this, uh, on the right. official selling list. But yeah, they're, they're huge in their own way. So we talked about Halo. Uh, now there's a game that came out and it's only on one console. And I've never played any of the series, but it's one of the biggest selling video game franchises of all time. What do you think this is? Okay. And it didn't start in 2009. It's been around for ages. Yeah. I'm, is it Grand Theft Auto now at last? No. No? <laughs> Damn it's, it. It, it's not a game that got, it's a game that got released in 2009. So while GTA games sell really well for m- multiple years. Yeah. I'm talking about a game that came out. Yeah. Yeah. I think 2008, was it, the other? Um, no, I have no idea at the moment. It's a big franchise involved people swapping cards. Okay. It got uh, to the Pokemon? point where these cards, that's right, yeah, these cards were worth loads of money, um, and people used yeah. to swap them all the time. No one does um, Pokemon cards now, do they? There's, no, there's so no. many card games now, and card collection things. Yeah, Pokemon was kind of like... Um, for this, I guess for, for the Eastern world, no Western mm. world, it was Western a big world. deal. Like I'm sure in places like China, in the Western world, they were like, these are just trading cards for something. Got to catch mm. them all. Became such a big thing that people wanted more and more. They wanted to get all 150 characters or whatever it was. Um, yeah. And and remember, this used to come out on just the Nintendo yeah. games. Um, yeah. So you'd have it on the DS. You had it on like the Game Boy. And people used to spend so much money buying that these used yeah. to sell loads and loads. A, yeah, huge. And you hit. think it, and it was just, and it's such a small market and it's, that they had. And it, it started on. with a video game, as far as I know. It started on a Nintendo console. Yeah. Which, which which blows my mind whenever I think about it. I think we might have talked about this before when we were talking about the Detective Pikachu movie. But but yeah, like it's it's a cartoon. It's, there's movies. There's cards. And it started out as a simple. Got to catch them all. DS game or Game Boy game, yeah. rather. something like that. Yeah, Game Boy, the original Game Boy, was it? It was on the Game Boy, yeah, on the um, yeah. either the color or the the green one. But it started yeah. a long time ago. And then long. on the Game Boy Advance, and this no, this one that's go. in, yeah. So this one that's on the uh, on the top ten is a DS. So you okay. imagine like um, the Nintendo DS was the only place where you could play this one game, and it yeah. sold so many copies that. Even games like, you know, um, there'll be games below this that would be on cross-platform. And this mm-hmm. is a one-platform exclusive game, and it's outsold so many big games when you think about yeah. it. True. I mean, Nintendo do that a lot. Uh, the franchises they concentrate on and keep exclusive are really big sellers, aren't they? Yeah. I think about the ones we talked about already, plus Zelda and whatever other ones <laughs> i'm sure there's others mario mario kart especially yeah exactly mario zelda pokemon tetris although they don't have exclusive rights to that anymore no so the the version that came out in 2009 was called pokemon platinum Mm-hmm. okay At, where do you rate it i've never played a po- pokemon game and i'm gonna give it a playstation i think wow they're like, they're like RPG games where, you know, you, you walk around the world, to, usually a 2D world. Yeah. Um, and you battle things and you collect things and you, you, you level up. Yeah, PlayStation. Sounds fun. Cool. So the, the next game I'm going to skip because I know you've never played a version of this <laughs> franchise. It's um, sure? an NFL game. Okay. Uh, unless if you've got anything to bring to the table for an NFL um, game. I played 
I played NBA Jam. Is that the same thing? No, that's NBA. <laughs> it's basketball. <laughs> NBA. This is NFL. <laughs> National <laughs> Football What's League. The difference? They have the they have the ball in their hands. Two different hands. footballs. Two different they balls. Have, they have it in their hands. It's the same game, right? It's American. It's completely <laughs> different. <laughs> So yes, yeah. that's why I thought I'd skip this one because you'll have nothing to bring to the table. Next call. comes next comes a game that I. What about you? Have you played NFL? I played one NFL game. Yeah. Okay. It's very. I mean, for someone because because I don't watch the sport enough, I don't understand yeah. like why do you need a timeout? What what's the rules? You got to yeah. steal ten yards. You got to you have so many attempts to do that. Then you're cool. Yeah. You have run right, so back. You have games. defensive. Uh-huh. Exactly. Kick the ball. <laughs> um, Put the ball if, on the floor, you, kick it. Uh, kick if it. you watch it live, it takes like four hours to complete. It's a long, long game. Um, okay. But lots of stop and start, stop and start. And the reason why they stop and start is because they make tactical changes constantly. Mm. So it, it, it's, it's a really deep game. Yeah, um, I don't know how that relates into the video games. Like if, it, if they can bring all of that in, because there's, yeah. there's so many different things that you can do. Like you can... Pl- practice a play while you're in real life you could be like you know the whole team cuddle together and you're like okay so if we're in this scenario let's practice these drills and then yeah. in the in the game once the game comes the following sunday whatever yeah you can actually play that play that thing, yeah. drill i don't that know how you do amazing. that in a video game but um, that would be a really good video game though strategy yeah. wise it sounds well, like a in, great game but in football on the field on the so football they're now incorporating drills and you can do different things you can have your defenders do certain things when the balls come in when the crosses yeah. come in so it's become more intelligent the fifa series has so maybe yeah. nfl in 2010 was okay and over the years it's got better but yeah mm. i don't think i don't think you know enough to talk about no. we'll have to look football. Into it, so. especially because you called it basketball Basketball, yeah, same thing, right? They hold it in their hands. <laughs> yes, it is. So the <laughs> the next game and the last game that we'll talk about on the top ten selling list is okay. a game franchise that I, I mean the first the first few games I really liked and I think you hated. Them. Oh yeah, if you like it, I hate it already. That's right. So what yeah, do you rubbish. think? <laughs> what do you think this is? So it's a it's again it's a <laughs> it's a game that used to come out annually. And now I think they do it biannually. Yeah. Um, always, no, um, and it always comes out <laughs> about no. It's just before Call of Duty. This game comes out. Um, I have no idea how that how that how it helps me. It doesn't help. Okay, me Okay, so w- one of the games had that uh, th- the name of the game, and then it said Brotherhood. Yeah, I'm just getting that now. Oh, I know which one it is. Yes. Okay, what is it? Right, it's rubbish. It's, it's rubbish creed <laughs> it's not it's, it's, it's amazing creed obviously <laughs> assassin amazing creed 2 um, and it's assassin creed 2 now i know for whatever reason you did not like assassin's creed 1 um i i liked assassin's creed 1 and i loved assassin's creed 2 it's because it yeah. did everything and he got bigger maps and you know everything was bigger the story the missions yeah the gameplay really wa- and then i really wanted to play black black flag I Black Flag's that. even better. That's maybe the best in the series. Everyone yeah. talks about that. I know um, Odyssey is a huge, like um, it's open world, which is kind of where all games are going towards. Um, and there's so many side missions and side things that you can kind of do, as well mm. as the main kind of through line. But um, are there and, are there those um, invisible walls that are part of the simulation? Now, that's what the, the problem you had was like game it. number one, where they locked yeah. off certain areas until you'd completed what you needed to complete for them oh, to okay. open it. Now that was that was your biggest problem with the game. Yeah, as as the franchise up. evolved and yeah. the developers got better and the open world elements got bigger, yes, it's no longer you ha- you are enclosed. Excellent. You now Good. have the size of the map to roam around and you can go and roam around whichever area you like early or late in the game i know that was your biggest concern it was now i know (laughs) i can play the game and now you can go back and play them all Um, because i didn't like the premise like the premise was is your you're going back in time you're in a simulation yes you are um and that's an okay premise but then they use that to make that invisible wall in the first game and they put me off (laughs) that's not (laughs) 
It's not the reason why they made it. But it's, yes. But as the games go on and they got better and the developers built the worlds, yes. they became more and more open worlds for you. So, I mean, okay. there's a lot of games that stop you from going to certain area intentionally. Yeah. I mean, Grand not, this, is not the, this is not the yeah. only game that's done that. So I know yeah. you, for some, that's the only reason why you hate this game. But it's yeah. a, I, a number two is arguably a great game in the series. Um, I think... I think what they did was when they started to make these games um, every year, the quality started to reduce. Black Flag was really good. And now they've gone to a bi- biannual release. So every two years, which is much better because it gives developers a time to go away, come up with a new idea, fresh new take on it, and then yeah. bring it in. Yeah. Um, so where, where do you put this? Because this is this was available on PlayStation, Xbox, um, everywhere. So you say, you say number two... Uh, got better and removed some of those yes some of your constraints it got removed xbox (laughs) ah after Uh, after all of that (laughs) i'll I'll give black flag a try eventually someday and i think that might get a playstation but we'll see see. it depends how intrusive the whole idea of the um simulation is if it gets intrusive in any way i think i don't think i like it the okay. movie was okay. Oh, I didn't even watch the movie because I watched uh, <laughs> the first 10, 15 minutes and it looked super boring. So I never yeah. got around to finishing that. Well, I'm not a fan of the game, so I, that's why I probably liked the movie. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's right. Um, so honourable mentions, right? So 2009 was a big year for um, games that's kicked off huge franchises thereafter. So one of the biggest ones was Bar- Batman Arkham Asylum. Yeah. So this introduced Batman in a very different way, right? Do you remember the whole cinematic start where he's taking Joker to Arkham yes. Asylum, yeah. drops him off, and then he's all a trap, and then he's stuck yeah. in Asylum? But what, what became apparent straight away was they took Batman, they gave it a cool, cool little story, made the map really small because you're stuck on Arkham, you can't really mm. get out of Arkham. It and you do, well. Yeah, and it still felt open world if, enough. And you could you could choose how you want to roam around. Certain areas were shut off to you, so you couldn't jump ahead. <laughs> but what was cool was the combat system. And yeah. since 2009, so many games have kind of copied this one, combat yeah. system. Yeah. So this was the game that really did that so well, like that fluid fighting s- simulation that came off of this. Yeah. And and it yeah, was back in 2009. And and Bat Vision as well was one of the great things of the game. Like yeah, you had a, a mode where you could. Um, it was like detective mode, was it as well? Yes, it was. Yeah, so you can see uh, things in a different. Yeah, you could see how where you're going to attach your batarang uh, thing to get around, sneak around. You could do stealth. You could land on people. Yeah, because you had the option, and game. and you could stand on top of those gargoyles. Remember, turn down and just pick up someone. Yes, because you used to jump down and just grab someone and then just yeah. dangle them. Yeah. Um, and it's very stealthy that way because you could play the game and you could go all guns out blazing trying to hit everyone or you could play a very stealth kind of hide mm. in the shadows and crawl underneath um, in those little duck tanks and, you know, yeah. come out different areas and trying to incapacitate the people. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Mm. I took um, quite a while to play this game. I didn't get it straight away, but I was very pleased when I did. That's because you thought you were playing as Robin. Didn't understand. <laughs> you know, why did they, why did they, they keep said, calling me Batman? They said it cut off certain areas, so I didn't play it. Yeah, because what they did <laughs> at the start, you weren't allowed to go to certain parts of the map, and and then yeah. as you got further into the game, those bits opened up because they didn't give you the gadgets to get out of that area. Yeah, and that's the way it should be. Not an actual invisible wall. <laughs> Stop shitting on the game. Um, another big game that came out in 2009, and I know you played this one because we we all played this one. Borderlands, the very first Borderlands, came yeah. out ten years ago. Yeah, great game. Um, we played this. We uh, we played the um, the game of the year edition. So we played the DLCs. Yeah. As well, um, yeah. and and this was the first kind of uh, first person shooter. RPG style game that I remember playing where you'd level up, you then choose your skill tree and you could then choose a path and then depending yeah. on which one character you had you would unlock his or her 
true yeah. kind of weaponry thing and then the guns were just insane to start yeah, off with for a skill tree yeah yeah and as, sort of as the game went more on normal for first yeah. person shooters now like Call and of Duty just, it now. yeah there's heaps and heaps of weapons as well and they're all different so you, you had so many different variations on sniper rifle smgs pist, uh, pistols rocket launchers shotguns all sorts of different weapons different uh, characters rifle. Yeah. yeah, you had four main characters. Um, you had the yeah. the Siren, you had uh, Roland, um, yeah. you had Brick, and then you had the um, ass- um, assassin character as well, Mordecai. I think I, think I played the Siren. I think I you, played you as maybe Roland. played a tank, didn't you, Roland? Yeah, because yeah. he, he could throw the uh, tor- torrent down and then you mm. could hide behind it. Yeah. And one of the things the torrent did really well was if you hide behind it, it'd give you health back. And yeah. it could regen your um, ammo as well. And so your that's friends why, as well. Uh, yeah, exactly. So when you play multiplayer, just throw it and hide. <laughs> and then you just keep getting, <laughs> keep getting your the um, then, yeah. ammo. Get your <laughs> ammo back. Because that's one of the things. Um, I think it was a solid game. I think the, the bosses were really good, except for the final villain. You know, the destroyer. Mm. I think that was a bit poor. But up yeah, until that, that. everything, Basically. all the others were really good. Like you had Skagzilla. That was really good. Um, and all the little kind of side missions, uh, the fetched quests were good, but uh, yeah. the, the fast travel system was really bad. And there would mm. be massive um, areas that you'd just have to walk through because th- yeah. there was no car in those episodes. And then when there was a car, and not in all of them. Not in all of them, okay, yeah. And then when you did have a car, it was literally to <laughs> use it to go from place A to B, yeah. except for one jump you did. So you, so you would not like Red 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 Dead Redemption Two. Like, there's a there's a lot of horse riding from Miles. Yes. That's not for me. You played it. <laughs> okay. we'll talk about I, no, I played I played Red Dead One. I think oh, that's okay. as far as I, I did complete that. It was, it was fine. Yeah. Um, two is big. But we'll two, talk about that when it's that time. <laughs> when it, when when I get round to playing it, um, another big game. Uh, franchise that started up in 2009 is Demon Souls. Okay. Did you ever play any of the Demon Souls, the Dark Souls games? Um, no, I think I played only one of them when it was. I, th- I think it must have been on PSN, PS Plus. Uh, okay. Which was oh, yeah, what was that? Bloodborne. Dark Souls. Oh, Bloodborne. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's the one. Yeah. So I I played um, Dark Souls you, too. You played a few of them, haven't you? And I played Bloodborne. Um, I haven't played Demon Souls or Dark Souls Three because Bloodborne was too good. Uh, so I played mm. Dark Souls Two. It's very, they were very clunky, slow moving characters. Yeah, and a lot of it was based on kind of you become, your character should become a tank and should have a good, um, yeah, well, uh, a, a a a good shield so you can kind of deflect the hits and then you take one two yeah. hits and then you got to roll away. And that was that was kind of like the way, the way it played out pretty much. Yeah. and it's just very could, slow. Yeah, I thought it had a bit more variety of choice there. But oh, the I, the weapons. There's loads of weapons you could choose, and you can gem them up. Um, yeah. There's more choice in that than there is in Bloodborne. But I think yeah. Bloodborne's far superior than any of these. Even better, yeah. Dark Souls Three. Um, I, I I mean I played that with you, and you you just kept dying. Okay, I just kept <laughs> following you around. Um, yeah, I always do in those games. The Bloodborne is one of the. It's 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 much much better because it's more fluid. It's on the PS4. The character movements are better. So what they've done is they've realised, you know what? Let's mm. make it a lot quicker. The yeah. the whole combat system they redid, uh, and it's so much better. It's good. On, and and I, the game I think Dark is Souls, visually stunning. Yeah, I think Dark Souls um, deliberately sort of made it slow to try and make it particularly hard it's just they wanted it to be hard and clunky and just kill you all the time it's but um yeah it's much better now it's fluid yeah it's still a tough game i think, I, I, I didn't yeah i don't remember getting much further than like the first I, main i, I think place you killed one boss in Bloodborne. and that was it yeah you killed one boss and then you gave whereas up. you persevered i think a bit better i i yeah so um so i've I played a number of games on the playstation i've only Hello? got um hello can you hear me hello i'm here again now yeah, yeah so i've played a number of games on the playstation but there's only a few that i've completed 
yeah. uh, to the point where I've got platinum trophy. Well, I mean, it's completed okay. to the end. So okay. Borderlands, all of them, they're just easy platinum trophies. You just got to finish them. And mm. so was Bloodborne. Like you literally had to play the games through, kill all the bosses, even the optional ones, yeah. and then just unlock the three endings, which is relatively straightforward to do. Um, and then you get platinum trophy. And I, I, this is the one game I played all the way through. Uh-huh. Found all the sides kind of bosses, areas, whatever yeah. it was, and just kill them all. And yeah, so yeah, yes, for me, th- I think Bloodborne isn't as difficult as everyone makes out. If you stick with it, <laughs> stick I with think it. I, I think what happens is because we've been spoon-fed so much information in video games where you get a map. Um, yeah. If you die, there's no consequences for death. There's yeah. literally just like, you know, you restart or you respawn and the person you find has already lost half the health. So you, you punch them again, they're dead. Yeah. With um, this style of game, it's like the old games where there was no map. Like if you look at old Mario, old Sonic, it was just a 2D yeah. map, one hit and you're dead. Yeah. But with Sonic, you'd have to collect rings. But if you didn't have any rings, you'd die. Yeah. And there was no map and you yeah. kind of just have to make your way through it. Do I go yeah. further down? Yeah. Do I go further up? And people never complained about that. And then as soon as a game like this comes out in this kind of climate, yeah. Everyone's yeah. like, oh, there's there's no maps. It's just really, really hard. I get one hit and I die. Yeah. Well, I like that aspect of it. It's fun. It was still tough. It's, it is. There was a battle, particular battle, I think I, I was struggling with. And that's what slowed me down. But apart from that, I loved, loved it. Yeah. I think what's fascinating is, you know, when you look at the PlayStation um, trophy guide and it tells you how many people have got this trophy. Yeah. So, uh, so Quite, from yeah. from Reddit and you talk to the people who are on there, and they've, you know, persevered through the first X number of bosses. They've all got platinum trophies because they've just mm. literally played the game to the end. Yeah. And that's that's pretty much it. But then everyone else is kind of like, if you look at how many people have got the first two, one optional, one main bosses. boss, yeah. there's not that many people have completed it that far. Yeah, People have installed the game and haven't even got that far. Yeah, so it, just, that, it yeah. just goes to show if you persevered and got a little bit further, you'll find it, it becomes... It doesn't become easier. The game is still super difficult, yeah. uh, but it because you've learned, you've learned a lot more technique yourself. You know how to control your character better, and and mm. the gun or which weapon you prefer, mm. um, and you can finish the game with any weapon. So you get a choice yeah. of three, and you can complete the game with all three of them. Mm. And that's normally not the case. It's normally like if you want to finish the game and you want it to be easier, find this weapon in this location at some point mm. or you know get this weapon and it has to be forged with this thing and that's going to make the game easier i think with bloodborne yeah. they just stripped it all back kept it simple and just said yeah. there's, there's a there's a finite number of options and any of them is good enough to f- kind of finish yeah. the game and kill it's the complete, final boss it's completely opposite to like like you say the the uh, the modern way of thinking which is oh it's got to be easy or people will not play it yes and that they just make everything easy and lead you through everything. Exactly, yeah. And I think great. sometimes this one, I, I made a I made a map of the whole area. I was enjoying like exploring each bit and seeing how it all connected up. And yeah, yeah you had to do it yourself. Yes. There was literally nothing uh, to help you at all in the game, <laughs> which was great. Um another kind of big game franchise that got started off uh on here is um uh, there's a couple which I haven't played, like Dragon Age. Did you ever play Dragon yeah. Age? No, I'd like to, As... but I haven't. Yeah, let's skip that. Um, one that you mentioned, Just Dance, which is okay. your dance mat. That's, yeah. That really started in 2009. Um, another one called Prototype. Okay, Just Dance is more the Wii versions, I think, where you're using the controllers. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Or Xbox Connect version. Yeah. But then yeah. the other one that came out in 2009, which we'll talk about, is Infamous. Okay. So similar, similar to Prototype, enough. which is like a superhero kind of um, origin video game. Yeah. And Superpowers. you had the option of playing either good or bad. Yeah. And you, you make that choice as you're playing the game yourself and the karma consequences, which in the, in the first one, because the map restricts you from going to certain areas <laughs> intentionally... Yeah. Um, in, in the first one, it, it's still made for such a good game. And I don't know where you stand with <laughs> the map no, situation in this game. That's yeah. Okay. It, it, it wasn't it really had... visible 
there. So no, it, it just wouldn't let you through. It, I think <laughs> the place is on fire or something, or you jump through it or something. But okay. I, I like I like the fact that this game you had the two choices: you can be good or bad, and yeah. then you just play it good all the way through, or you just go and play bad all the way through, and just yeah, basically blitz your way through everyone. And and the w- weapon tree also changed depending on which yeah. um, which choice you'd made. So if you'd gone good, you'll see uh, when you upgrade, you got to the next level. It'll show you what a good character um, mm. at that level can pick up. What would it be? that character's upgrade when you go bad it shows you the upgrade and i think i mm. played this the first time around i played bad all the way through and <laughs> then i went back and played good but in terms of I'm the opposite terms of, i played good first then in, te- in terms of the game there's only a couple of um, side missions that change but otherwise it's pretty much the same game yeah e- either way you get different characters only come up do different things slightly mm. yeah and then this was followed up by infamous 2 which was even better i think yeah, because the world was massive. That's the first was... one I played was the second one. Then I went yeah. back and played the first one because the second one was so good. And, and it had that user-generated uh, content where people can generate yes. their own levels, which yeah, is incredible. I, I did that a lot, yeah. Uh, and this time around, I think the Karma skill tree was better, much better. Mm-hmm. And if you went evil, spoiler alert, um, the, the consequences of that in the end is bigger in this one than if you went mm. evil in the first one. Well, in, in, in the end of the first one, the twist at the end and the, the main battle, the boss battle at the very end um, is good. And, and it doesn't matter if you're good or bad, I think. Mm. But in the second one, if you've chosen good, you, you have your big battle, you have the thing, but you save someone and it, it changes the outlook. But if you went evil all the way through, the actual end battle is different as well, which I really liked. I think they really put a lot of thought mm. into that. And they made that kind of like conscious effort to make the skill trees very different this time and missions off of that. Okay. And then it was followed up by First Sons as well. Or First, yeah, what's First Sons? First First Light and Second Sun or something. Second Sons, yeah. That was free on PlayStation Network quite a while back. Um, Yeah, I missed that. I I played that one. Again, that's, that's good, but it's not as good as kind of like Infamous 2. Okay. Yeah, once it looked like it was... Was it brought out by Sony? And yeah. Used as a flagship for the PlayStation Four, and that's when it looked a little bit watered down. That's why I haven't haven't got round to it yet. It's not your type of thing. Uh, <laughs> so, but as as a franchise, the first two, I... were brilliant. Yeah, definitely. they were, weren't they? They were. Mm. And also, there's um, there was a Halloween. Um, yes, there was. Yeah, DLC, like yeah. an undead version. Yeah. Yeah, technically it was actually a standalone as well um, in the same city, but uh, their Halloween version of Halloween. You play as a vampire and stuff, which is cool. So that's and you, the, could do, uh, you could do all the, U, yeah. the UGC making stuff as well in that. And that was a much yeah. cheaper standalone DLC you could get. So you didn't even need Infamous 2. You could still make levels. If you oh, have a brilliant, guess, yeah. It's still worth it. It's still out there. I still yeah still generate some user generated content yeah. I think the servers are still on so you might be able to still go in there and play yeah <laughs> it was 10 years ago no it wasn't like in oh, two, wow. 2000 and whenever that came out because that was oh, yeah, number okay. two. the first one oh, yeah cool. okay so we talked about video games for the first time wow <laughs> 2009 yeah. um, I'm just going <laughs> to run down some of the um, albums that came out and then just so for this one yeah. Uh, I thought we'll do something again a bit special. So, w- when we were a bit younger, uh, before the internet really blew up, and you can have access to albums, music, literally mm. by going online and just clicking a button, and you could purchase the whole thing, or you can yeah. listen to it via Spotify or Apple Music, yeah. whatever it is. YouTube, Back uh, in the day, we used to have to go to a shop, sometimes a shop? called HMV, sometimes called R Price, sometimes called Woolies. Woolworths. That's crazy. Um, even supermarkets oh, used Christ. to sell these yeah. things. Um, oh, wow. And you'd go to a record store or something and you'd buy it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to name the top 10 selling albums. And okay. I want you to say, okay, so you will say vinyl. So this is you going out and buying it on vinyl. Cause that's, oh, that's, okay. that's the best, best means of purchasing yeah. something. Or yeah. 
if you didn't like it and and you don't like oh, the song, you say MP3. MP3. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I'm hoping there's still MP3 files. <laughs> so the top the top ten selling albums worldwide, right? I'll go from ten upwards because I, okay. I don't think you'll be able to guess these. But if I was to say to you, home. if I was to say to you ten years ago, who do you think was making music successfully? Kylie Minogue. No. Madonna. Well, she may have been, but she wasn't in the top ten. No. Okay. Um, Michael Jackson. Yes, he was. Yeah. So yes. Michael Jackson's on here in. And once in, he died. As the fifth biggest selling, mm. the sixth biggest selling. The eleventh biggest selling, the twelfth wow. biggest selling, nineteenth wow. biggest selling, twentieth wow. biggest selling of the year, twenty fourth, twenty fifth biggest selling albums of the year. So stuff like Off the Wall, his first album sold one point seven million, Dangerous one point seven, um, Bad sold two million, um, A Grace Hits King of Pop sold two million, The Essentials, This Is It. Remember that was going to be that movie yeah. that got released as well. Yeah, that's, the DVD. That's old. You can still Three. find that DVD in um, in charity shops quite a bit, I think. Yeah, so that sold <laughs> three point one million, and the the ones in the top five. So if I was, so what do you think was his fifth was the fifth biggest selling album of the year, and it was Michael Jackson's. Which one do you think it'd be? Uh, which were the options? <laughs> I didn't give you any options. Oh, okay. ba- based on Michael Jackson, and you know his album backlog. Thriller, is that an album? Thriller, yeah. Thriller was the fifth biggest selling album of 2009. Nice. Followed by number ones. So, yeah, so he had two slots in the top ten, plus he wow. was pretty much everywhere because, obviously, yeah. his passing meant a lot of people wanted to listen back to his music. I reckon, yeah. based on kind of like these numbers here, four, four million, three million, he may have sold like 20 million just himself in that year. Mm. So that's, that's Michael Jackson 10 years ago. Who else was um, selling lots of records 10 years ago, you think? Eminem. Um, he was, but he was number 15. Oh, no. With relapse. Uh, okay. Um, I have no idea. I don't really know the pop that much. Okay, so we'll talk number 10. Remember, um, you then have to give it a rank rating, okay? okay. Vinyl or MP3. Vinyl or Number MP3. 10, okay. Beyonce Knowles, I Am Sasha Fierce. What's that? You've heard MP3. of Beyonce? <laughs> okay, <laughs> brilliant. Um, Michael Bublé had an album called Crazy oh, yeah. Love. The Boob. Heard of him. Okay, <laughs> where do you put him? I don't know, MP3. MP3. A group that was massive in the UK, but not so much in America, which is their home country. They yeah. had so many big hits, singles-wise, in the UK, but they hadn't broken America yet. And mm. I think by the end of the year, they become bigger. Um, Kings of Leon. Okay. I heard they're good. Let's give them a vinyl. <laughs> Ooh, Kings of Leon made it, broke the curse. Um, you two had an album out called No Line on the Horizon. Um, yeah, vinyl. Ooh, I nice. can't argue with you two. Uh, Michael Jackson, number ones? Um, vinyl. Definitely. Vinyl. Yeah. Michael Jackson, Thriller? Definitely vinyl. King of Pop. Yes. Yeah. No, number four is a female artist who still makes songs today. Okay. Um, she used to do country music. Now there's loads of pop songs. Okay. Shania Twain? No. <laughs> no. Okay. First name Taylor? Um, Taylor Swift? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Taylor Swift Fearless. Um, I have no idea, really. Um, I'll, give it, I'll give it a vinyl. I'll give it the benefit of the doubt. Okay, now the next, the next is a is a group that um, became big after they. So basically, they had, they had a number of albums out, mm. and they were told by the record company to become more commercial. You need to get a female singer into your group, and they okay. did, and then they became even bigger with songs like "Where Is the Love." Okay. The group consists of Will I Am. All right. Okay. Fergie. Okay, yeah. That's a that's a group? epic group. I have no idea. Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> oh, okay, right. That's who that Black Eyed Peas have the third biggest selling no, okay. album of the year. So wh- where are they? Um, I'll I'll I'll, I'll give them a pass. Uh, it's a vinyl. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Come on, man. Um, number two is arguably the biggest selling female artist of that year. Uh, mm. This is her debut album, and okay. maybe puts on one of the best shows that you'll ever see if you see her concert. She's incredible. Yeah. She's a Spears? performer. No. <laughs> so she didn't have a debut <laughs> ten years ago. Uh, she's she's just an incredible incredible performer entertainer. She does it all. She she um, got nominated for an Academy Award last year as well. Okay. She's she was in a she was in a film with uh, Bradley Cooper. Okay. Is it Adele? No. Okay. A Star Is Born. I don't know the film. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, uh, Lady Gaga. Oh yeah, Lady Gaga. This one. was her first debut album, so this yeah. had stuff like Poker Face, Paparazzi, yeah, Just Dance, huge album. Yeah, you know you can't with you can't argue with Lady Gaga. She's a she's a vinyl. Mm. So that gets <laughs> us to the number one biggest selling album of the year. Belongs to uh-huh. a lady who who became famous after starring on a reality TV show um, from okay. the UK. Okay. She sang, really? yeah. So she came on to a reality TV show. Simon Cowell laughed at her when she made her entrance in, and then she started oh. singing, and some of the okay. judges started crying. Oh, awesome! It's a huge viral clip. Is it Boyle? Yes, it is Susan Boyle. Yay! I got one. <laughs> and and Susan Boyle is a. She's a vinyl. She's a vinyl. Brilliant. She's a classy lady. She's a classy lady. Um, <laughs> And then, um, so, so that's kind of like the the biggest selling albums of two thousand and nine, and some mm. and some of those guys are still around, as Beyonce, Taylor Swift, um, Black Eyed Peas are com- making a comeback soon. Michael Bublé mm. still around, um, and it's amazing. Like if you think ten years ago, like Lady Gaga was just starting out with like take Poker Face, just yeah. dance, uh, and well, it's that, been ten. That seems like much longer to me compared to Michael Jackson dying. That crazy yeah um some of the biggest selling songs of the year as well singles were black eyed peas boom boom pow do you remember this song um i think we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll skip the music because this isn't your thing at all just keep singing though it's all good <laughs> okay uh 2009 uh, now we'll do um honorable mentions and then we'll look at the top 10 so 2009 movies right okay 10 years ago's Movies, okay, so yeah. be- before you guess what were the top ten selling biggest movies, I'll mm. I'll just talk about some honourable mentions in two thousand nine. So every year there's loads of films that come out anyway. Um, some mm. do really well, some do terribly. But some of the kind of honourable mentions, I thought I'll just chuck in a few, so you know they weren't in the top ten, and then okay. I'll get you to try and guess what was in the top ten. Uh, one of the films that came out in two thousand nine was a um, film called Jennifer's Body. Which was okay. the first Megan Fox solo film? You know, she was riding her off the um, the Transformers franchise, and then they oh, thought, right. "Oh yeah, she's such a big star. Let's give her her own film." Did you ever yeah. watch this horror film? No. I say it's horror film. It's not really a horror film. It, was, it wasn't that good. It wasn't received that well. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, two thousand nine is the year where we have the Notorious B.I.G. film, right. Notorious, the the biopic, which was incredible. Okay. Okay. Um, there was a remake of Last House on the Left. That's fine. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox came out in 2009. Do you remember that? Um, yeah, I remember what it is. Yeah. It's a good I don't know, film. I don't know if I saw it, but I remember it. 2009 also had Mark Webb, the pre Spider Man director, directed mm. 500 Days of Summer. Okay. So that's 10 years old. Yeah, I know that one. Uh, 2009 that was also um, Sam Raimi doing another horror film again, Drag Me to Hell. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. One. Um, there was another Friday the 13th reboot. There was an Underworld film, but that's fine. And also, 10 years ago, cause 10 years this mm. November time, there's yeah. going to be a sequel to this film. 10 years ago, Zombieland came out. Oh, wow. Okay. That's been about for a while then. Yeah. yeah so it's the director of Sazam, he's directing, because uh, he, he directed the original Zombieland. He's yeah. back. Um, have you seen the new trailer for Zombieland? Yes, I have. So Woody's back, Emma, Emma's back. Um, 
um, Jesse Eisenberg's back. They're all back. Um, it looks fine. I think I think I don't need to see a trailer for it because I watched the trailer and I realised, you know what, I just need to watch the film. Yeah. It's one of those. Just watch the film. It's, it's a sequel to Zombieland. What could go wrong? Exactly. And I think the trailer isn't that good. <laughs> so, 2009 was also the year that M. Night Shyamalan made a film called Earth okay. with Will Smith and Jaden Smith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, height, the height of their powers. Where they came mm. up with this incredibly rubbish idea for a film. Yeah. Um, 2009 also is the year where Tony Scott made his last film, the taking of Pelham 123, which had Denzel okay. Washington and Chris Pine, where they're uh, train drivers. Okay. Uh, Hannah Montana, the movie was out as well in 2009. Awesome. You know, so um, <laughs> Miley Cyrus is becoming a huge star by this point. So her albums and yeah. stuff will be the next kind of things. Uh, Paul Blart, more cop. Kevin Smith was on a roll. He, he had a big hit. Uh, but also 2009 is when Watchmen came out. Zack oh, Snyder. Yeah. So just before he was about to ruin Batman Superman for everyone, he had taken a crack, <laughs> a big swing and a miss at the Watchmen franchise. That was a good, that was a good movie. I love that. How's that not in the top ten? Because it was rubbish. It what? Wasn't, it was... it... <laughs> yeah, it made, made less money than the film I'm about to mention next. All you care the about final... is the money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, it was a brilliant movie. It wasn't. It was I mean, the director's was... cut was good, but this yeah. was not. If you compare it to the source material, then it's, it's nothing on that, maybe. Yeah, but, exactly. But as movies, movies about superheroes go, it was, it was refreshing. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was rubbish. No, it was fine. I think the problem is the source material is too good. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't in the top 10. No, it wasn't that, <laughs> it wasn't that big a film. Two, the next film is actually featured above it in terms of how much it made. And that is The Final Destination. So up to, that, up to this point, it's been yeah. 10 years. There's been no more Final Destination movies. Oh, Quite yeah, a sad the world we one. live in. Yeah. Wow. And, I, and, I, I and I this is the one... one. Yeah, so this is the one that ends where they get back onto the aeroplane which is the aeroplane mm. that they that blows Should up at the end of the perfect. first one yeah. yeah it's really good i i, I enjoyed the final final, fan, uh, final destination franchise um yeah. 2009 was also a good year because it kick-started found footage horror again because paranormal okay. activity came out okay i never so that was that again oh you never did mm-hmm. so that was the very first kind of so. after um Blair Blair Witch. Witch. It's been years and years since a big horror film. There's been found footage stuff before, but Blair Witch, big, big blockbuster. Um, And then Paranormal Activity took that same premise. um, And then, you know, so many films came up with the found footage, found footage, found footage, all Mm. because this film made so much money off such a small budget. And that's all down to 10 years ago, 2009. Um, Another honorable mention goes to District 9. Uh, uh, so this was a directorial debut such a good film such Mm. a good film Um, Taken franchise started in 2009 oh no (laughs) Um, Michael Jackson's This Is It yeah obviously it was 2009 release Princess and the Frog which you just shat all over came out in 2009 which which I said was really good and 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 it's annoying because the films above it are rubbish like G-Force and Alvin and the Chipmunks yeah they're rubbish compared to Watchmen. Exactly. <laughs> you, oh, yes. you got me. <laughs> not, I did not see that coming. Uh, 2009 is the year Inglorious came out as well. That's okay. 10 years. Did that make the top 10? No. No. These are all honourable n- mentions. <laughs> um, Blindside and Proposal were huge films as well. Uh, 2009 is also when they reboot the Fast and Furious film where they took the thirds out. Remember we talked okay. about like having Vin Diesel back. The whole yeah. team came back. This that was it, two thousand and nine. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's when Mok-chi. I returned to the past and furious. Yeah, yeah, when it got rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> Mukchi ruined our childhood again with Terminator Salvation. Oh yeah, another Terminator movie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the one set in the future with Christian Bale. Yeah, every time you expect something amazing, and then it's just okay. Yes. Was 2009. No, I mean, the first two are incredible. Yeah, the first two are incredible. The rest are just like, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, In- no, I agree with that. <laughs> uh, 2009 also saw the X-Men Origins Wolverine film get released. 
Okay. Is that Another the good film? one? That's, that's, that's the bad one. <laughs> that's the, that's the yeah. first one. That was the bad one. Yeah, also, 2000 and, uh, 2009, <laughs> we had the Star Trek reboot. Yeah. That was a really those. good film. Yeah, yeah really, I, I really good. Yeah. Um, and now, now we're looking at the top 10. So the top 10 highest grossing films of 2009. Um, do, I'll, should I give you clues and you can work your way through them? So. Ten to Okay. So the 10th biggest film of the year was a comedy. Okay. Directed by Todd, okay. Phil, Todd Phillips. Stars okay. Ed Helms um, and Bradley help. Cooper. I don't know names. It doesn't help. <laughs> Um, the film is located in Las Vegas. Uh, okay. It's about a is bachelor it? party. Yeah, I think I know what it is. What's it called, Shoot. though? Um, <laughs> the the Hangover? That's right, yeah. Yes. 2009 was the year the first Hangover film came out. And the first one, I think, is still really good. I watched it quite recently. Yeah. I think it holds up. The rest yeah, I, aren't that good, but, but the first one is really good. Yeah. And it was Todd Phillips who's coming off of Old School, which was another great film. Okay. Um, the next one these? is what? Sorry. You're going to rate these? Oh yeah, sorry. I should give you, it. You um, should. You should do a fresh or run. No, no. So not me this um, time. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we'll do the same. We'll do a rating system again for yourself. Again, mm. you say you say IMAX because yeah. it's that good that you watch. You'd watch okay. it again in IMAX, or. It's on TV, and, TV. You, and, you're, and you're doing something else. Okay, so Hangover. <laughs> um, where, where do you watch Hangover? Would I, go, I wouldn't go to IMAX to watch it again. No? So You've only got two choices. Or well, I just watch it because it's on TV. Okay, of, course so, I, of course I'd watch it when it's on TV. When it's I'm, a TV when movie, on, so, yeah. so you shit all over it. That's fine. The next movie it's be all is, of them. It's like, is uh, a, a film directed by Ron Howard. Mm. Um, it's a sequel to a book that Darren Brown wrote. Okay. Stars Tom Hanks. Okay. A sequel. Yes. Has it got two in the title? No, it doesn't. The books oh. don't even have two in the title. Okay. And it's got Tom Hanks in it. It's got oh, Tom no, Hanks. Just... Okay. So the, the the original is called Da Vinci Code. Okay. This is its sequel. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Angels and Demons. No, I didn't watch that. <laughs> okay, so based on our rating system, where are you putting it? Um, I have to go to IMAX to watch it because I'm seeing it. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've seen The Hangover. I don't need to see that in IMAX again. Brilliant. That's... <laughs> okay, so 2008, sorry, two, yeah. uh, 2009 still, the eighth <laughs> biggest film was a film directed by Guy Ritchie starring um, Robert Downey Jr. and Jude mm-hmm. Law. Doesn't help me. I don't know names. What about Downey Jr. Iron Man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, he's in it. He's in it. Is he? Okay. He's in it. He's in the film. He's the main character, main lead. Okay. Any more? Um, he this 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 film title has had so many other variations. Um, even so, where where Sir Ian McKellen played this person recently. Um. There's been a TV show. So this this version uh, or this film. Mm. Um, one of the characters called Watson. Okay, that makes it easy then. Sherlock. What's the... It's Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. <laughs> Two thousand and nine, Sherlock Holmes. Where do you put it? Um, TV in the background. Oh man, I really like the first <laughs> one. Um, the next film came out in two thousand and nine. Um, as in next highest grossing is a sequel again of a YA story. Okay. Stars more clues. Robert Pattinson. Okay. More clues. Dreamy Robert Pattinson. How much more do you need? It's Dreamy Robert Pattinson. I don't know. Who's he that? plays a vampire. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I know what you're going at now. Okay. It must be um, Twilight. Yes. Yeah. But which one? Is it not the first one? <laughs> it's not the first one, no. I don't know. It's... Twilight 7. <laughs> Twilight New Moon is the second <laughs> one. Okay. Um, that film was huge, right? So 700 yeah. million worldwide. The yeah, whole I franchise saw, is massive. That's the series. And you, and not where, in the cinema. So where would you watch them now? Um, DVD box set. But that's not an option. <laughs> 
I wouldn't even watch it on the background. I'd switch it off. Okay, that's that's <laughs> that's, that's an endorsement there. That's, I, see, I prefer that. Um, number six is a Pixar film. So think back to two thousand and nine. What Pixar okay. film was huge? You think? Oh, I don't know what one was. Wreck It Ralph? No. Um, what else was there? Pixar, Inside not Out? Disney. Mm. Inside Out came out a couple of years later. Yeah. I don't know. Give me some clues so I can guess it. Um, <laughs> it's it's a Pixar Animation Studios film. It's I mean, oh. as soon as you give no, as soon as you give the oh, if you talk about the synopsis, planes? it gives away the whole thing. What did he say? Planes. He said no, no planes, oh. no cars. Oh. It's got people in. It's not about like toys. It's okay. not about a dinosaur. It's not about rats. Not okay. giving it a location. I don't know where it was based. I don't know where it's set. I can't remember. Okay, what is it then? You can't remember. It's a. It's out. Um, I don't want to call it a coming of age story, but it's a story about a. Um, up. A young. So yes, it is. Yeah. It's yes. Up. I mean, how can you describe it without giving it away? It's a man Word, with a balloon. Yeah. <laughs> like... Well, you called it. A, you called it a coming of age story, and I got it. So I don't know how. <laughs> because that kid who's the. Yeah. Um, the scout, he's coming of age. Yeah. And and then you got a talking dog. <laughs> so up, where, where does this fall? Um. Oh, this could be a controversial choice, though. Oh, you're not gonna shit on up, are you? Uh, it's 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 not as memorable as movies. Oh, Most Disney and Pixar film. movies. Um. So. It had one of the most iconic opening sequences. Ever. Yeah. And it's it's quite sweet and moving and upsetting. Um oh, it had a talking dog, they told jokes. Yeah. That's it's actually yeah, it's an amazing movie, T V. Oh <laughs> after all of that. <laughs> Shit all oh, okay. my child. I have to watch it again. I to, I, it's one that always flies under the radar for me, so I'm gonna have to watch it again. Okay, so now now we're into the top five. Um, this is a Roman Emmerich film, the guy who directed Independence Day, stars John Cusack. It's about the world ending. Um, is it called World's End? No. <laughs> it's um, based on in, what they believed in the, the Mayan calendar. No, okay. The Mayan calendar, this was big back in the early 2000s. The Mayans believed the world would end on a certain date, and that's yeah. what this film is called. It's literally the date that they said. Oh, okay. I don't even know that. 2012. <laughs> That's what it's called? Yeah, 2012. I, I never watched this. Okay. 2012. So 2012 is when the Mayans believed the world was going to end. Yeah, um, I remember. So, <laughs> okay. I know. I know it's, it's now In 19. Reality. We're still waiting for it. Uh, so where, yeah. where do you put this? Um, I don't know. What's it like? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> I haven't seen it. <laughs> okay, so it's it's, it's a uh, disaster movie um, mm. where the elements have kind of like come up. We're 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 up against the elements. Uh, we've okay. come up with this idea of saving certain people, no. so we're going to send them up in a spaceship. People are creating bunkers because you know no. the world is collapsing literally around us. Buildings yeah. smash, um, seas are rising. All sorts of stuff happens in the in the yeah. movie. Is it worth me watching? No. Uh. That case, TV. <laughs> TV. If you're not going to watch Up, you're not going to watch that. The next film, um, the fourth highest grossing film worldwide, um, is a film, it, a second film in the franchise. Mm. Um, the, Something two. There is no number two. Okay. Four. <laughs> directed by Michael Bay. Oh, Transformers? Happen. Yeah, Transformers. Which one? Two. That's, yeah, I told you, Revenge of the Fallen. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Again, TV. Uh, TV. Yeah. And they just got really long for no reason. Um, yeah, they were just sure. they were long, and they got really super racist. Yeah. In the films. Sure. Yeah. This Fake is where it all sexist. all changed. Yeah. And, exactly. And rubbish action that just is designed to confuse you. The action was good. Everything else was rubbish. Okay. <laughs> The next film, the third highest grossing Which, film oh. of all time, is a Blue Sky animated film. I think it's the fourth in the franchise. Okay. 
A Blue Sky um, animated film. Yes, 20th Century Fox. Fourth in the franchise. Yes. No, and the tagline is Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Um, okay. Dawn of the Dinosaurs. That's the um, tagline. Oh, there's a series. Um, Land Before Time? No. No. Hmm. Jurassic Park? What? No, one of the characters is called Diego. Diego. Dang it, I'm getting confused now. Sid. Sid uh, the Sloth. Sid the Sloth. Oh, okay. Um, oh, that one where they're escaping a zoo? Was it Madagascar? Mammoth. There's a mammoth in here. Ice Age. Ice Age, yeah. Yes, I got that. That's the second highest gross, uh, third highest grossing film of the year was Ice Age, Dawn of the Dinosaurs. Where Somebody's you that? had four of them. That's amazing. Um, Ice Age, I mean, yeah, I'll give it a pass. Uh, let's go see it in IMAX. IMAX, brilliant. Yeah, you know what? This one's actually really funny. It's also got um, Simon Pegg, and he yeah. plays he plays this, because um, they, they find like a T-Rex um, okay. frozen in, there's, they find the whole kind of Dawn of Dinosaurs frozen in time. And it's, and it's yeah. really funny. I've seen it several times. It's really good. Okay, um, cool. The second one is the second highest grossing film of the year. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, based on a book. Okay. And I think it's <laughs> the sixth book in the franchise. So it's the first film and the sixth book. No, this is the sixth film and the sixth book. Okay. So they've had, six, they've had five films before this. Yes, they have. Okay, I need more clues here. It stars Emma Watson. Okay, Emma Watson, Harry Potter. <laughs> yes. <you> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, Harry Potter, but which one? Um, well, I'll just add them up. One, two, three, four, five, six. I don't know. Um, Half-Blood Half Prince. Half-Blood Prince, of course. So this was the second highest grossing film of the year. 900 million, over 900 million wow. worldwide. So where do you watch this? Um, IMAX. Wow. You've got to watch Harry Potter and IMAX. It's a big call. Now then, the number one film of 2009 is the number two film of all time. Number two film of all time? Yes. What, selling wise? Yeah. And Avatar? It is, yeah. 2009 yes. when we first got introduced to James Cameron's 3D, be, didn't a- it? 3D Avatar movie yeah i i watched this actually in the cinema (laughs) in 3d and then i watched loads of films after that because everyone was converting doing that 3d conversion stuff and no film had or was shot in real 3d Mm. because this one where you got you could really see the depth of 3d i thought and this film did that so well okay (laughs) okay Uh, Uh, the story was watching in 3d yeah I think if you're not watching it in 3D, don't watch it. There's no point, yeah. I think I think the story is fine. It's like Fern Gully, uh, The Last mm. Rainforest. It's there. There's nothing yeah. interesting in the story Quite itself. Basic, so. It looks incredible in 3D. And he's Should just spent tons, tons, tons and tons of money <laughs> on this film. And you think after sinking a ship, and that became the highest grossing film of all time, he mm. then made this movie. Which wasn't a franchise at that point. It wasn't based right. on a novel. It wasn't based off of anything other than their own idea. Maybe it's yeah. you know, good or bad, but it's a it was a unique original property, and it was the highest grossing film of the year. When you yeah. consider Reboots Harry Potter, Ice Age, Transformers, I'm not sure about 2012, but definitely Twilight, Sherlock, Angels and Demons, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Night of the Museum, Star Trek. X Men, you know, like in the top twenty, there must be at least fifteen, sixteen films based off of existing properties or books or adaptation. Yeah. Um, and this was this was the highest grossing film, and it was an original idea as well. Yeah, it showed in the story that was weak, but it looked good. It sold well. Yeah, uh, there was just a big buzz about it, wasn't there? Like, oh, how much money was spent on it, and just that that era of CGI improvement, people were on board for it. And yeah, it. and there wasn't any 3D film for so long prior mm. to this. Like as as we're we're young people, we've only seen 
one 3D film up to that point, a pro- as in mm. not in a theme park, I mean a proper film, and I think this was it. And then after that, everyone was converting their films to 3D, giving you glasses yeah. and stuff. But this was really, and it was real 3D, I felt. I felt I could definitely see the depth, I could definitely see the, mm. the, the thinking that's, behind it. And stuff. That's true, because really 3D isn't usually utilised very well no. when they do do it. I mean, I think the first movie I watched in 3D was Clash of the Titans. Oh, remake. yeah. That, that looked really okay. terrible. That's terrible. It, I quite enjoyed it, it for the 3D effects. But I, there was... it was better than most films I've seen in 3D since as well. Just, just I, with... I watched that in 3D. I watched After, after Avatar, I watched um, Alice in Wonderland in 3D. It wasn't mm. that good. Um, um Clash of the Titans in 3D because uh, almost every film they were just converting to 3D, yeah, just just, just chucking it out bit. there. Yeah. And because it wasn't shot in 3D using that kind of that kind of camera work, yeah. you could tell it was just it, the only thing that was 3D was the one person in front of you, yeah. and then everything else was 2D behind them. I mean, Avatar was, was mostly CGI, so they didn't even need to shoot like film it. It was just a ca- case of making it, creating it in 3D. Sam Sorry. Worthington was in it. He was real. Yeah, obviously, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so that, that's our uh, re- rewind episode on 2009. Re- rewind review. Yeah, rewind review. Um, mm. Talked about some of the big cultural um, aspects. We talked about music, which I realised you know nothing about. We <laughs> talked about <laughs> video right. games for the you first time. Uh, <laughs> and, and then we discussed the top top movies of the year. Excellent. So. Now let's move on to our segment. Okay. So our first first segment is my guy quick reviews. We talk about stuff that we've been watching. In, yeah. in your case, you wouldn't be listening to because you don't listen to music no, or reading watch. or anything. So what you been up to? <laughs> well, I've been away with my uh, mum to Germany for the weekend, so ah. um, I can't say what I've watched. But uh, <laughs> the south of Germany in the Remagen area is quite nice, quite pretty. Lots of hills um, and woodland and uh, forest, lots of little settlements and lots of winery uh, grapes growing up all the hills. It's yeah. a very, very pretty place up oh, the river nice. Rhine. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Apart from that, um, Dragon's Crown I'm still playing, which I told you a bit last week about. Um, so I can tell you more about that. Um, obviously, it's um, Dragon's Crown is a 2D, 2.5D, like Golden Axe or... It's actually a um, a a modern uh, version of sort of the Dungeons and Dragons versions of games that are like the Golden Axe games. Yeah. Where you, you can actually have different char- you have different character types you pick from. You have and you can pick up different items, but it actually just takes it even more steps further. Where all that you can collect up, it's got lots of item management and um, replayability and alternate routes and secrets you can find Ooh. and quests cool. and online multiplayer and um sit down multiplayer and uh, yeah it's just got a lot going for it still and yeah it looks looks lovely still anything for yourself um so i finally got around to watching uh wreck it ralph 2 oh, it's currently okay. on it's currently on sky movies what took you so long why did you not watch that it's 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 my problem with um, with kind of kids films. Like if I don't go watch oh, it at a um, at a you need, undesirable you need to... hour, yeah. then it's weird that there's a bloke sitting in the cinema oh, by himself go. trying to watch a kids film. I, I um, couldn't. I, I wouldn't let that put me off some movies. Wreck It Ralph Two. Come on. So um, I finally it's on Sky Movies for anyone who's got yeah. Sky Movies. Um, I. I what think story wise it's better. Like they explore more of the world. They yeah. go to the they go to the internet and they do um they try and go to eBay to try and buy the little um the steering wheel. Yeah, that's all I don't fun. think it's as fun as or as funny as the first one. Yeah. I like that they do they reference a lot of kind of things that are currently in the world. You've got pop ups, she's a little yeah, pop up walking around. Fun, yeah. Um, they go to, they got eBay, they've got like a fake YouTube that they made up just for this mm. film. Um, and then, you know, all the likes and stuff, and then you generate money and income off that. Um, yeah. and then there's stuff around yeah. stealing, not, oh yeah, stealing loot. 
because people mm. pay money for yeah, certain bought, weapons and characters sure. and and stuff like that. So some of it, like, and they talk about the the dark web. Um, mm. Uh, bits like that so there's things in there that are kind of relevant and they are kind of things that happen yeah uh, which was good to see like it's not just an arcade anymore they've gone to the next level and come up with a really cool yeah. idea is it wreck it ralph breaks the internet or ralph breaks the internet yeah and, um, alternate and title. i don't know how you make number three because if you've got internet now yeah I don't, I don't think you can come back i don't think there's oh. any story you could tell um the, all the princesses the thing was quite yeah. good yeah because uh, hence why we talked about 2009's Princess and the Frog, because she's in it as well. There um, we go, we've brought it back round. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got all the other princesses, and they all kind of seem like, you know, we're all chilling, but I would have liked to have seen them do more, not just save him once. Yeah, yeah of course. Because it's all... It's, yeah. Um, but then there's so many references throughout the, the thing, so many Easter eggs, Stan Lee's in there, and there's Stormtroopers, there's so much stuff yeah. to see. I think... It's one of those intentionally they just chucked everything at it and then they you can watch it, it a second. Didn't. Yeah. But they still yeah. have stuff like Sonic the Hedgehog, they've got Sand Geef, Chun Li. Yeah. So they've got yeah, other yeah. arcadey characters in there as well. Um, but they're so underutilized. Yeah. Like Sand Geef is in there at the start and he's up there at the end with them bison and they're not they're not used enough, are they? So you could put mm. any person there. So it's, um, and same with Sonic, he's literally there for couple of seconds yeah um yeah it's it's still a good film um i like yeah. i like that they've gone for different cool. kind of stories to it but i didn't think yeah. it was as funny as the first one no uh, i agree i think um the, my problem with it was there was something wrong with the characters near the end i think they may have changed the story halfway through or something when they're making it and i'd like they just seemed to not ring true near the end there was something up, up with them but apart from that it's a really good really funny movie but yeah, I think it broke away a little bit from the heart of the characters by yeah by making them do things slightly that you don't think they would have done. Yeah, um, like she gave up everything at the end just to kind of um, to ride a car with Gal Gadot. Yeah, those guys. That race uh, sequence is quite good. I think that's the big action yeah. sequence. Yeah, uh, that's the mul- really good. Yeah. The multiple uh, Ralphs was fine. I didn't really think much of that. I didn't think yeah, it was that as good was as that race did as well. So I definitely think there is room for a third one because because they've they've diverged away from the character so much in, in yeah. those little ways. Mm-hmm. That I think they can do a better job with a third movie that concentrates better on their characters. Um, I think I, I heard near the time they actually had an entirely different story sort of story arc originally uh-huh. planned, but I think that was probably even even more off of the off of their characters. I'm not sure. Um, we'll have to I'll have to look into it again to tell you. Because even even the characters um, in like in terms of Wreck It Ralph, the people in his arcade, they they are even more sidelined in this one. Yeah. Than it's it's the it's it's him his story with Sarah Silverman. Yeah. Understand that, but some of the other characters are just literally just almost like a cameo in that film. That yeah. they, they appeared at the start and then they're right at the very yeah. end when they're That's racing. The- that's the other thing with it is that if they focus so much on the oh look wreck it ralph and vanellope they're the famous ones they're the they're the ones that are on the billboard that are going to focus so much on them and yeah it lack it it lacks some integrity because of that uh, it's a shame because i really love the first one and the second yeah. one is, is okay it's the okay sec- it's funny second, yeah it's 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 a good kind of it's an interesting take and i like all the references and stuff um the other thing I watched, uh, which is currently on Sky Movies, I watched for the second time, is the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse film. Oh, yeah. And it's just as good. It. Still yeah, as good. It um, and it looks even better on um, my TV than it did in the cinema. <laughs> wow. Because I can now pause it and I yeah. can go for a wee. In my wow, <laughs> it's... excellent. That's good. Well, you can pause it. Well, exactly. It's, um, it's great. In, enjoy the... Enjoy the... Uh, frame by frame of spider-man and he flies yeah. over the screen <laughs> and okay. well it's not just spider-man <laughs> it's, it's miles morales um, oh, okay. and, and all and all the others um so yeah that was really good um cool. and i think uh and i've been watching something um in the uk called yeah. uh english barclays premier league season because that's now started so i've been watching okay. a lot of the football 
You've been watching which it is in a, the UK. Good. Which is what people play with their feet. They kick a soccer ball around. Oh, some soccer people call ball, it. yeah. A peak ladder, um, some people call it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I've been watching lots of that because that's now started again. Uh, and the cricket has started again. So, you know, busy okay. with sports again. Yes. Because um, as, as, that's, how, that's how important those things. And um, I... Yeah. And that that's it, really. I was, I was hoping to go watch something, which I'll talk about in the previews. But that's yes, it's preview time. Okay, so our next segment, my guy previews. My guy preview previews. Stuff. There we go. What yes. You, what you had to say? <laughs> we both said it. We did it. Okay, so previews what are you for next. To? Well, I, I was. Oh, I got a. I got a choice between two, right? So, yeah. Hobbs and Shaw, or oh, Three yeah. Hours of Quentin Tarantino. That's that's a tough choice for you. I can, I can I can only watch the one because I've only got enough time to watch one this week. Okay. So I might watch Hobbs and Shaw. Well, the thing is, Hobbs and Shaw might. Well, I'll give you two things actually. Hobbs and Shaw has been on for a week or two, so, well, at least a week. Yeah. Um. So that could potentially go out of the cinema after. It's still going <laughs> to be won't. a few, couple, few it'll, more weeks. It'll still be around, yeah. But the problem with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Quentin Tarantino, is that it's an 18. And so far, in my cinema anyway, um, there's not that many showings of it. And they're not even filled up. So I, I don't know if it's going to hang around in the cinemas that long. So I would bear that in mind when you're putting off the movie. Because I quite often put off a movie and then find that it's gone off the cinema already. So I'm definitely looking forward to prioritising Once Upon a I Time mean... in Hollywood. I mean, it's it's like it's like who do you want to be sandwiched between um, <laughs> Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio versus yeah. Yeah. The Rock, Idris Elba, and Jason Statham? I, I, I think, mean, I think, there, that's a, I, think I think they would destroy me. I think I'm going to stick with Brad Pitt and, <laughs> and Leonardo DiCaprio. You think, you think they would cuddle more? You think? Uh, yeah, be... stick with the pretty boys. You know, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> as much as I love the other two. I think I'm going to watch um, Hobbs and Shaw. You're going to watch Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, so it's just because it, it's going to be a shorter movie. film. Okay. You you can watch both, then we'll review it. Okay. Yeah. We'll okay. We'll watch off. a movie. We'll watch a movie each, and then we'll just do it. Hobbs and Shaw and um, Once Upon a Once Time. Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Yeah. So you we'll you watch you watch um. You watch Once Upon a Time, and yeah. I will try and guess what the review yeah. is. And we'll and compare it. I'll, I'll watch Hobbs we'll, and Shaw. We'll, we'll describe a scene each and see if it becomes, the, if, see if it sounds like the same film. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. See if it lines up. Did they do a good job of copying each other? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. But there, there is another movie to look forward to this weekend, though. Oh, which we dis- Which we, we discussed um Privately. Dora the Explorer. Dora the Explorer, so, yes. Um, so Dora the Explorer is a is based off a TV show which I've seen loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of episodes of. Is it um, a UK? Uh, it's, a um, it's a US. It's on US. Nick Jr. Um, yeah, yeah. I've seen all of season three, all of season four. <laughs> Netflix used to have season seven. I've, I've yeah. seen all of that. It's now got season eight. I've seen all of that. Um, the trailer is very different to the TV show because Dora's a grown, grown live up action. girl, and it's Real live girl. action. She's still got boots. Um, Swipers in it as well, uh, but for some reason played by Benicia del Toro. And in in the show, Swiper only ever says, "Oh, oh man," so that's, <laughs> his, that's his lines. That's that's all he ever says. So how much uh, is he going to say in the movie? Exactly. I mean, it's opened really well. I think it's done like twenty. 20 or just under 20 million us in the okay. in in the us um critics quite like it. it's like 60 or 70 percent on rotten tomatoes it's doing well yeah, critically um yeah. but i think it looks just, great in the trailer uh, my problem is because i'm used to the, the tv yeah. format and the way the show is episodic i'm expecting the movie to be quite similar but it's very different from the trailer i can tell it's nothing like uh, the show it's, where it's got to be a standalone movie and it's got to it's got to spread away from the actual series a lot i think and which is so... fine with me i find dora the explore the actual series quite strange and comical like just saying you know can you point to this and then it just waits yeah so you make a decision you choose and then it says, well you choose... done you did good 
Well, yeah, she's encouraging. This is why it's such a good show. <laughs> it's an encouraging TV it's show. Really good. She it's, asks, it's she so asks, good. she asks you in English or in Spanish a number yeah. of choices, and then you choose, and then she will yeah. say, "Excellent," and she'll tell you where. And there's a there's a moment where the map will say, "This is the way to get to the place," and then she'll ask, "How do we get there?" So it's just remembering. It's teaching. I think you know, it's a, it's an incredible TV show. Um, I don't see how those elements can come across in a movie because it just won't make sense. So, so I, I think they've scrapped all of that and it'll just be a straightforward adventure. I'm looking forward to it in the same way that Pokemon uh, Detective po- Pikachu was like different from Pokemon and how Sonic movie that everyone hated on because Sonic looked weird looked so look different weird. to Sonic. I just love that sort of quirkiness of a, of a change to a movie. So I'm really looking forward to it. You you were looking forward to it as an adult, but you you did tell me that you heard a child review that they didn't like it. They hate it. Yeah. Because it's live action. I mean, if yeah. if you, if you're grown up watching a cartoon, and initially someone says, "Oh, look, they're going to make a TV. They're, they're making a movie yeah. version of this." Initially, you think, "Oh, it'll be a cartoon," yeah. but it's not. It's live action. And you know Dora. So I recently you, watched. Um, you know the animated Dora. So. Yeah, I recently watched uh, Paw Patrol the movie. Um, oh, yes. And it is um, the same characters, computer yeah. animated and yeah. not live action it's dogs. Just a movie version, yeah. Exactly. And I think that's kind of like what what I thought in my head. It may be, but yeah. it's not. That's what a child might expect. And yes, but it's not. So it's very disappointing. <laughs> it might be a great film. I'm just shitting on it for no reason. Uh, I think it sounded to me like you were looking forward to it. I mean, for me, I was like... Um, I know you want. I know you, I should watch Hobbs and Shaw, but I've got something more exciting. I want to watch Dora the Explorer. I mean, the the star cast is great because it's very um, diverse star cast. There's uh, Michael Pena plays the dad, Eva Longoria plays the mum. The girl from this is the same girl from Transformers. Last night, so it's a very Latino kind of um, film. Danny yeah. Terrero plays Boots. That's a good thing. Benicio about Del it, Toro. Well. Yeah. I mean, it's very diverse, Star Cast, yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. Because Do- Dora is, uh, she's Spanish-speaking um, cartoon character anyway. And she teaches yeah. kids Spanish as well as English. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And it adds into our, our racial theme today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. It's all about, it's, it's all about everyone having their own chance. Yeah. 2009 to 2019. Yes, so that's so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm going to be watching. Hobbs and Shaw. Cool. Hobbs and Shaw. Oh dang! I'll be watching once upon a time in Hollywood. Then probably I have to wait to the weekend to watch Dora. And if Hobbs and Shaw goes off in the cinema before I get round to it, so be it. You're missing out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, do the contact us now. Uh, yeah, you can contact us via. Twitter, um, <laughs> YouTube. Um, what else is it? Email. <laughs> Email. Instagram. S- send me a list. Instagram. It's, it's, it's on the description below. It's, uh, that's the one. It's on the description below. <laughs> so just check that out. Um, one day you'll get it right. <laughs> g- give us a give us a, a a suitable star rating if you can um a like if you if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more um and we'd love to hear comments and mes- messages from you uh especially regarding what else you want to see and what topics you think we should cover next i think you did a good job closing up <laughs> brilliant yeah thanks guys thanks for listening Thanks for listening and goodbye. Bye.